Welcome to Profile, Red Apple 21's monthly look at schools in Fairfax County. On this edition, the students and staff of Cardinal Forest Elementary demonstrate how involvement and cooperation make this school a place where learning is exciting, challenging, and rewarding. We'll see how teachers work together to make lessons more meaningful as the school works toward an integrated approach to instruction. We'll learn how students are building mathematics skills by taking part in strategic math games. And we'll visit the English as a Second Language program to see how students build vocabulary skills through visual activities. We'll also learn about the school's SCA and the importance of student input in the decision making at Cardinal Forest. All this is next on Profile. At Cardinal Forest Elementary School, located on Forester Boulevard in Springfield, involvement tops everyone's list of priorities, from administrators and staff to students and parents. Cardinal Forest prides itself in being a school that children enjoy attending, not only because they are involved in some of the leadership and decision making, but also because of the care and dedication on the part of the Cardinal Forest staff. From the time buses arrive in the morning until the end of the school day, everyone at Cardinal Forest works together to promote a positive attitude toward learning. We are a school that really tries to focus on an environment for children that makes them, will make them happy to come to school and excited about school and excited about learning. And it's probably one of our primary focuses each year when we look at what our goals are going to be for the year. Among the goals for this school year are efforts in the areas of math, the Integrated Language Arts program, and English as a Second Language, as well as activities designed to boost self-esteem and student achievement levels. While members of the Cardinal Forest staff work together to promote these goals, each member also makes a unique contribution to the overall effort. When I look at staffing for a building, I don't have one thing in mind when I interview for a teacher or when for, I look for people who would really make a contribution to the school. We have children who come to us with a variety of learning styles and with a variety of, of backgrounds. And I think in our teaching staff, we need to have teachers that have different strengths. And if we can pull on all of those and pull them together, I think we will have some of the best opportunities for children in meeting and matching their learning styles with teaching styles. A uh, primary thing that I want to have in each teacher that comes in this school is the love for children because that's what will show forth in everything that happens within the classroom. And I really feel strongly that that's something that we have at Cardinal Forest. Students agree that their teachers make learning fun and work to find the best ways to promote success in the classroom. I think that they help us learn a lot of um, new things and um, I think they're really they're they like like teaching because they seem to be enjoying themselves when they teach. The enthusiasm of the Cardinal Forest staff is evident throughout the school. Classroom displays are bright and colorful and lessons are filled with creative ways of teaching traditional subjects. This enthusiasm carries over to the students, who get involved not only in the classroom, but also in making the school their own. One of the things that I feel strongly about, and our staff feel strongly about here, is that children will buy into the school and will feel pride in the school when they have a part in making decisions about what happens here. So we've really tried to focus on our Student Council Association and have tried to make that an important part of the school. Okay, for new business this week, we're gonna, right now we're going to brainstorm ideas about... The Cardinal Forest SCA is actively involved in making decisions and providing input on school issues that affect all of the students. 
Elected classroom representatives meet regularly with officers to discuss activities and programs that promote school pride and good citizenship. Members of the Student Council also try to provide positive role models in addition to their other responsibilities. Well, I have to say the pledge in the morning uh, every week out of the month, I have to run the SCA meetings. Uh, we're responsible for setting good examples for all the rest of the students, especially the younger kids, so that we're role models and they know how to act as good students. And we also have to set good examples for the other sixth graders so they don't get out of hand and don't cause trouble for the teachers. The SCA provides leadership in many areas and has formed committees to deal with specific issues and concerns. Student representatives to the committees meet to discuss topics such as what kind of activities to hold in the school's courtyard. If you want to go back to your classes and get more ideas on how um, to use There's the a courtyard out classes, in the back in the, the middle of the school so and parties, picnics, they improve all the stuff and they build all the things like there's you, chairs and benches and all that outside and they maybe they could plant trees and all and all and they could make new ideas for the school in the outside to make it look a lot better. Okay, anyone else with any concerns they want to bring up to discuss at our next meeting? Another SCA committee helps promote good citizenship by recognizing citizens of the month. The committee members help with the monthly bulletin board honoring the award recipients and also make badges for each citizen of the month. They help with the citizen of the month and um, they help make um, a border where you put a picture of a citizen of the month on and um, they do all kinds of things with helping people be better citizens. Members of the Citizenship Committee also promote respect for others and good behavior and often discuss ways that they can encourage their classmates to obey school rules. Well, um, what he said, um, he forgot something. Don't push when they're trying to do good online in the cafeteria and trying to cut and wait until it's your turn to pay. Okay. So tomorrow, or the next day, or Monday, whenever you do your reporting about our meeting today to your buddy class, will you also The Literary Committee helps produce the school's literary magazine bringing in ideas for themes, collecting poems and stories from classmates, and in this meeting, organizing school-wide voting for the magazine's cover illustration. And as I was looking at the calendar, I think that we'll do our voting on January the 3rd. So if you write on your note paper, on your reporting paper, we will be voting for the cover on January 3rd. That will be after the Literary holiday. Committee um, helps organize a magazine with all of some of the kids' stories that they write, and they also write stories, and um, they have meetings and everything every month. Okay, Augusto, we're going to brainstorm the information about that we need to include in our pen pal letters to other schools. So, if anyone has any ideas on information we need in the letters, raise their hand. The Cardinal Forest SCA is actively involved in promoting school spirit, good citizenship, and student involvement. Through the homeroom representatives, special committee members, and officers, all students have a voice in decision making. In cooperation with teachers, administrators, and parents, the SCA is working to make Cardinal Forest, their school, a better school. Well, I think all the students are hardworking and they try their best to improve the school and what goes on in it. And the teachers, I think we have very good teachers and they help us learn a lot. And all the parents try to help the kids do as much as they can and produce the best quality work. And I think everyone tries their best to make Colonel Forest a better place to be in. Cooperation and working together improves all aspects of life at Cardinal Forest. Academically, students see the benefits of cooperation as their teachers join to tie lessons together for more meaningful learning. In this class, for example, 
students took part in an art activity designed to reinforce a social studies lesson on communities and community helpers. The students were preparing to paint a portrait of a community helper and as we learned, often use art to reinforce lessons from other areas of the curriculum. Um, part of the social studies curriculum for second grade is studying communities. Um, we talk about communities, um, community helpers. We have different trade books that we read along with this. Also for science, when we studied insects, we went to the insect zoo and we saw um, how some of the bees have their communities and their different helpers and the ant farms and things like that. So it does tie in in several different aspects. After a brief review of the role of a community helper, students learned about the artistic techniques they would be using for the project. Her face. What shape is her face? Okay. <laughs> All right, shall we, shall we ask our living model what shape her face is? Yes. Oval. An oval. Very good. Would everybody take your magic finger and go around your oval? Okay. And where's the oval? Is it at the bottom of the paper you're painting? No. no, where is it? Okay. <laughs> I love this living portrait here. <laughs> Students took a moment to visualize their favorite community helper, then began work on their portraits. I'm drawing a fine man. Then I'm going to draw the head up here. I'm going to put the button. As students painted, they began thinking more and more about their community helper, reinforcing earlier social studies lessons while getting the added benefit of an art lesson. Oh yes, I definitely think that's the case. I also find frequently if they have someone in their family that is a community helper, that is what we'll see in their painting because the children do paint what's most important to them too. So I'm sure when they paint the policeman, that policeman has been important in their life already. When the portraits were finished, students shared their work. Among the community helpers represented were teachers, members of the military, and nurses, in addition to the policemen and firefighters. The young artists then learned about a very famous portrait of a community helper painted by Vincent van Gogh over 100 years ago, adding an element of art history to this enriching experience. Teachers at Cardinal Forest find that an integrated approach to instruction not only reinforces learning, but also serves as a springboard for activities linking other appropriate topics. In this lesson alone, children learned about art history, painting technique, and social studies, reinforcing each component with every brush stroke. I think it's a good reinforcer because then they're getting it several different times. Um, it's also good with time saving. It helps with, you know, we can integrate uh, the art with writing as well then. After this, they can write stories about their community helper that they drew. Language arts is often integrated into other curriculum areas, as we see in this next activity, which combines reading and writing with science. As part of the first grade Learning Through Nature program, children experience a variety of reading, listening, writing, and discussion activities using classroom and library materials. All right, on Monday when we came down to the library, Mrs. Harris read the book The Big Snow. Can anybody remember what kind of animals were in the book The Big Snow? John? Right now we're, our science Dan. program is geared towards learning through nature, Dear. so Aaron? since it's the winter season, we decided to do winter animals in their homes. And so we're learning about the different types of animals and where they spend their winter and what they do during the winter, what they eat, how their, how their environment changes, and where they go when they don't stay in their environment. Students learned about animals in the winter I by reading two books, The Big Snow and Keep Looking. A heap of garter snakes are keeping one another warm at the bottom of this pile of rocks. They also sleep through the winter, so the snakes also hibernate. hibernate. After hearing both stories, children broke up into small groups to make a list of animals included in the books. Let's look at this list now. We have a blue jay, a rabbit, a chickadee, squirrel, mouse, 
bat, yes. raccoon, Listen. skunk, woodchuck, owl, chipmunk, garter snake, turtle, ants. Any other animals? The students then got back together to discuss and list the animals found in both books. Any animals that you re can re pick out that were in both stories? <gasps> both stories. John. Here. In both stories. They have to look very carefully. I know one. Another one that was in both. In this Aaron. activity, oh. as in many other programs, Squirrel. cooperation Squirrel. and involvement were key factors. With the combined talents of the classroom teacher, the reading specialist, and the librarian, the lesson pooled many resources to make the study of animals in the winter come alive. There's only one trade book in the science kit, Animals in Winter, and that's where the reading teacher and the librarian come in very handy. They've, they've helped me a lot. I just come down and I ask the librarian or I ask the reading specialist to choose books that go with what I'm teaching in science and they'll go through the library and just take out all the books that have to deal with that particular subject, whether fact or fiction, and uh, send it down to my room. Using information from the two books, students were able to move on to another component of the lesson and wrote their own stories about animals in the winter. What are the things that the deer is going to eat? What is it going to eat? A banshee. All right. What are you doing? Um, a deer mm -hmm. and a bat and some turkeys. What is the deer going to eat? Bark. Where is the tree that the he's going to eat from? What do the trees look like in winter? With no leaves. No leaves. I think it makes lessons a little more exciting for the for the students. They. Um, they're learning more through the integration process than just with if I just read a book to them or if I just introduced a science lesson and talked about it. Um, I think it's become very helpful to me because you can teach the different techniques in the reading process and in the writing process and also teach your different subject areas at the same time. These first graders are learning early in their school years that lessons are more meaningful when one activity leads into or relates to another. In this case, science and language arts were linked together for a memorable lesson. In another area of the curriculum, these fifth graders might tell you that their math unit on calculators was more memorable because strategic learning games were integrated into the lesson. I want nine times 20. Well, this year there's, uh, uh, there have been calculators introduced into the fifth and sixth grade at the elementary level, and we do a lot of calculator activities. Instead of the students spending a lot of time on drill, on multiplication and division, we teach them the process and then let them use the calculators to do it once they learn the process, rather than drilling over and over and over with the same type of thing. They can use them very creatively to uh, emphasize estimation skills, mental math skills. Uh, they're included. Calculator activities are included with um, all the strands that we're teaching in, in the new math program of studies this year. The use of calculators does not mean that students no longer need to know multiplication and division. On the contrary, these calculator activities are designed to focus on math strategies that require strong skills in both areas. But you, your chances are always a lot better if you can make an educated guess rather than a wild guess and check. So let's talk for a minute about some of the strategies that we might be able to use to do this, okay? The children love it. Uh, they like to use calculators a great deal. They like the different types of activities we do with them. Uh, a lot of times if they're working something out with a, doing it on pencil and paper with the process, then they can use their calculator to check. And they like that idea too. That way that helps them find their own errors and they can sort of self-correct. Were you trying that one? Students teamed up to use their knowledge of math and the calculator to play a variation of tic-tac-toe, which required them to rely heavily on math strategies. So then you would have to look for one with a, with a six in the one's place. I've got to try another one. Okay. If they're trying to find the largest product that is given, they might look at multiplying the two largest factors, and conversely, to get a smaller product, multiplying the two smaller ones. Uh, they might look for things that end in zero or end in five. They might look for um, uh, rounding. I think one of the charts had um, 
uh, 8 times 99, well they would round that 99 to 100 and then say 8 times 100 and get something that's a little bit less than eight, uh, 800, that type of thing. Okay. Now what are the, what are the strategies did you use? Was I this used, the one you played? Yeah, I used educated guesses. Okay, and what did you base those on? Uh, um, I just really just looked at them and I... Okay, did you do any rounding? No, not really. The multiplication tic-tac-toe game gave students the chance to sharpen their thinking skills, get involved in mild academic competition, and at the same time, learn that math can be a lot of fun. If I'm going to try to get it diagonally, then I'll try to get six, 660, so I'll do 66 times 10. And that's 660. Now I have a two ways. So if you try to get 50, I'll get 110. And then if you try to get 110, I'll get 50. I say that we're moving into an age of technology. In fact, we're already in an age of technology. Uh, people were delighted when we brought computers into the schools. Uh, I feel they should be also de uh, delighted when we bring calculators in. It's another tool that these children are going to need to know for the future, and the place to learn it is now. Encouraging the attitude that math is fun and has important everyday applications is one of the main instructional goals at Cardinal Forest this year. This math class certainly demonstrates the priority as students work together enjoying the skill-building math games. In addition to building math skills, another school-wide priority came into play during this activity. Several students from the English as a Second Language program were also part of the math class. And as they all worked together, the students emphasized Cardinal Forest's commitment to bringing students from other programs, such as ESL, together to feel a total part of the school. We're really fortunate to have the program here. These children really help broaden um, the understanding of their culture among all the students in the school and among the teachers. They bring to us the outside world, and if it wasn't for them, many of the other students would not have this first-hand contact with people from another culture. So they're a great asset to the school. Cardinal Forest provides instruction in English as a second language to approximately 90 students. Classroom activities are designed to introduce students to the English language through vocabulary, reading, and writing. Scarf, that's right, Myrna. Could you come up and find the word scarf? Okay, you may hang the scarf. Find the word scarf. Very good. Go ahead and put it, put it up on the board. Students in ESL represent 15 countries and seven different languages. And although the teachers don't speak all of the languages, everyone works together to open the channels of communication. Our children in this school in, throughout Cardinal Forest are very very helpful to one another and that is why they are able to learn English so quickly. We have, we generally have more than um, one uh, language, one student that speaks the language so that if we have a new student coming in that doesn't know any English at all, we can pair them with another student that acts as their buddy to assist them with the types of things that they need to know for, um, for school. We have um, Two of the teachers that speak, um, one speaks Korean, one speaks Spanish, which is, certainly assists those that are beginning with those languages. Um, but we have some languages that are not spoken by anyone other than maybe one or two students, and, uh, such as Arabic, and we have other students that are great help to them. What else do you see? A skirt. 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 What's the skirt made out of? Skirt. In this activity, students are learning the English words for everyday clothing items. Using pictures of the items, students describe how the clothing is worn, what it is made of, and other details that require descriptive words. Tell us what you have. Gold. Gold. Um, it's gold. What is it? Gold. Yeah. It looks like dog. It looks. Right. So, it looks like a dog. It's a gold some, dog. And some right. diamond. Let me tell us what it is. And some what diamond. else does it have in it, Ninjin? Because students develop their English speaking skills at different rates, activities are designed to teach and challenge all levels. 
We are working with um, clothing, and we have uh, one group of the very beginning students that are doing clothing with in uh, playing bingo, a bingo game, and identifying the different articles of clothing. The students that I was working with have had more English, and they are getting down to more detailed descriptions of clothing and classifying clothing. Um, they will have follow-up activities, which will include writing about um, different types of clothing. And we need to look at the second letter. So. WK. Providing instruction to students new to the language and making every effort to get these students involved are two main goals of Cardinal Forrest's English as a Second Language program. The ESL students add an element of cultural awareness to the school and are involved in many programs that allow them to share their experiences. Throughout the school, sharing and involvement are evident in all programs. Administrators, teachers, and students feel that their school is a very special place because everyone contributes to make Cardinal Forest the best it can be. Well, the kids here, um, they're really nice and all that, especially the teachers. And they work hard to make the school a better place for us to be in. And the kids, they don't give the teachers much of a hard time to make this school the best place. I like how the, the teachers and all of the students help organize a lot of activities and, um, and I like uh, how, the thing, how, how the activities are run and set up. As far as the children are concerned, I think one of the, the two things that help to make school unique for them are uh, the fact that our belief is that school needs to be a happy and pleasant and safe place for children to come and that what we do in education, in the academic area and with our curriculum, is to try to also build on that. And I don't think Cardinal Forest could be the kind of school that it is without a partnership with the home. And we have parents here who have really bought into that, and they help and they support us all of the time. And I think it's through the joint effort of school and the home that we're able to be so successful with our students. Cardinal Forest Elementary is successful in providing quality education to students because everyone gets involved. Parents, teachers, and administrators organize and support programs that give students the chance to succeed. And students are active in the educational process by taking on leadership roles and contributing to the decision making. All this combines to make Cardinal Forest a unique, child-centered school where involvement and success go hand in hand.